Hello, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be showing how to create an automatic image to sketch conversion tool using Python. Okay, so this is gonna be a super cool video and a really useful introduction to the OpenCV or computer vision um, module inside of Python if you're unfamiliar with it. So hopefully you like this. Before I get too into it, if you are enjoying this video or have found anything on the channel useful, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a ton, and I roll out a ton of content just like this constantly. So to get started, you're going to import this module called CV2, which it's the second iteration through of a big computer vision package that they've installed. But if you don't have this in Python already, you may need to do pip install and then it's not just CV2, it's actually OpenCV-Python. Um, so if you don't have it installed already, I do, but then you would go to the terminal and you would do it just like you can see here, pip install OpenCV-Python. And then as long as you have a, a modern version of Python installed, that's gonna take care of it for you. Then you're good to go on the importing of CV2. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create two windows to display original and transformed because throughout this process we do a few transformations as you'll see to our original photo to get it to a sketch um, another thing is I recommend dropping a copy of whatever image while you're working on this I've got me here uh, at the Pittsburgh Pirates Stadium um, with fake hands that's going to be my image that I work with today. Uh, if you want, go ahead and drop it into your project directory. That'll be really easy to reference, but you can reference images anywhere um, on your computer. You'll just have to use the full directory extension when you start typing in. Okay, so we'll get to that in a little bit, but then um, I said we're going to create two windows to display the original and the transformed. So first we're going to do cv2.named window and it's kind of this standard python way of doing lowercase but then if you get two words um, then you use a capital to separate the words out that's pretty normal in python modules and we'll call this one original and uh, we're just going to give it cv2 dot and then window normal so i'm not going to go too much into the specifics of open cv it's a huge module that can do a ton of stuff so i'm going to focus on our sketch conversion that we're doing today and um, if you like this and you want to see more broad open cv concepts just let me know about it in the uh, comments below and we can take a look at doing some more in-depth stuff in the future so we're going to do two of these, and like I said, um, we're going to call one original and the other transformed, and for now, this is going to give us like a nice resizable window, as we'll uh, see when we get in in a little bit. But the next thing we'll do is load image, okay? And so I'm going to create a variable. I'm just going to call it img for image, and it's going to be cv2.imread, I'm read, <coughs> excuse me. And then uh, just in uh, parentheses, in <laughs> quotations, type in the name of your image. So mine is IMG09. And if you're using a good IDE like PyCharm, um, it will probably auto-populate with them if they're in your directory. So that's nice. You can go ahead and grab that. And then the next thing we'll do is uh, we're just going to go ahead and do cv2.imshow. And then we'll say what window to put it in and we made that window called original and we're gonna have it show the image and uh, this is just so that we can display the image and I can talk about a few concepts with OpenCV while we're in here display the image and the last thing we're gonna do is we are going to wait X seconds before actually it's milliseconds milliseconds before automatically closing. So whenever you open something with your computer, uh, there's this option for, it's called wait key, and it's gonna automatically close your window after a certain number of milliseconds, unless you want it to be continuously open, in which case you wanna put a zero in there. Oh, I said display, that's display. So because we don't want this thing to close, I'm just gonna go ahead and run this, and you'll see, 
So it made that window for transform, but we didn't put anything in it yet. But we have original, you can see my photo here, and it's resizable, which is kind of funky. Um, but that's great. We're already just getting the photo we picked popping up. And I'll just show you real quick what happens if we put 1,000 in here. So that should be one second from once it loads. It goes ahead and automatically closes your windows. So we're just going to leave it as a zero so our stuff doesn't close. But that's what the purpose of that last line is. Okay. Now let's go ahead and start transforming this thing. And every time we do a new transformation, I'll show it in the transformed window. I'll explain what's happening. And in no time, we're going to have a full sketch conversion. Okay. So the first thing we'll do is convert image to grayscale. So if you think of like a, a normal sketched image in pencil, it's all gray. So we'll start by just doing, we'll call it gray image. It's a good idea to put every transformation of your image in a new variable name that explains what's going on there. Uh, you could just keep overwriting IMG the whole time, but then you're not going to really be able to do an original versus a transformed. So to get a great image, it's just going to be CV2 dot and then convert color. It's a nice built-in function. You say the image you're converting and then CV2 and then it has this built-in color and then it's, uh, it's not RGB, it's BGR just to be fancy. Um, and then two gray and you can probably see I'm not gonna get into too many of these right now But there's there's all these different ways you can do BGR to RGB You can do BGR to gray you can do um, you can also do BGR alpha Which is basically a like transparency limit So we don't have time to get into all of those modules in this video. We're just focusing on Transforming a sketch, but I definitely could cover some of the other things you can do with this conversion tool in the future so we're converting it to gray there, and then I'm gonna start doing this second CV show now. I'm gonna do I'm show, and then we'll put it in transformed. And this will do gray image, okay? So we should have two side-by-side um, -side transformable windows, and you can see this one's a little bit smaller, um, but that's okay. So I'll go ahead and pull that up. You can see all we did is make grayscale. They're identical other than that. Hopefully you're not sick of this photo because it's going to be popping up a lot. Uh, one thing I'll cover real quick because you may be saying like, well, what if I want it to be a specific window? You can do that. Um, I'll go ahead and type it out here. So if you want that, uh, if you want that code, you can copy it from here. You would use CV2 resize window and then you would give the name of the window that you're resizing and then you would give the X and Y dimensions. So let's say we're doing uh, 800 and 600. This doesn't need to be copied out yet. I'll go ahead and run that and you'll see the original is still resizable but it opens up at that set size. So if I were to go let's say 400 this might look kind of bad. Yeah so it looks real squashed um, but you can see like that's how you would set a default. So if we did want 800, 600 actually looks pretty good. If we just want it when we open them up um, in the beginning to be the same size and to be that size, that's not a bad way of going about it. Make sure you spell everything right. So we'll go ahead and leave it there. And let's get back to it. So grayscale is just the first step, okay? After it's grayscale, the next thing we want to do is we want to invert the grayscale image okay so what we do there it's pretty easy we're just going to do inverted gray and then image whoop, underscore talk and type all that and explain inverted gray image and this one's actually really easy um, all you do is you take 255 which if you're familiar with rgb is the maximum value and you're going to do minus gray image and you're creating you've heard the term like a negative of a photo in film that was always a thing we're creating a negative of the gray image okay and you'll see what's going on here if i go ahead and do inverted 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 gray image all right so let's go ahead and display that one and you can see it's it's grayscale but then it's also flipped um so, so that's good that's the next step towards drawing a sketch um the next thing after you invert it is going to be blur it. So blur gray image. And this is kind of the, uh, the one that really makes it look like a sketch. Um, so we'll call it blur inverted gray 
image and you're welcome to use a shorter variable name. I'm using a longer one because I want it to be real clear what's happening on here. Um, there's also a couple different types of blur you could do, but we're going to use Gaussian blur. Um, again, I'm, I don't really have time to do, to do a full explanation. No one would watch this video if it was like 40 minutes long. Um, but Gaussian blur is just going to blur all of the edges of your image. You're not going to have sharp edges anymore. And then you say what image it is that you're blurring. And then this next one is kind of like, um, it's called K size, but basically think of it as like how aggressive do you want the blur to be? And I'll show it at a few different, um, a few different levels so you can see what's going on here. But let's go ahead and add blur onto this. So we'll say blur inverted gray image. And this 121, 121 is kind of a medium level of blur. So you can see it's negative, it's grayscale, and it's blurred. Let's go ahead and look at it with like almost no blur on it. So we'll do like 11, 11. And you can see it's a pretty clear image. Let's go basically the far opposite direction. So like we'll do 211, 211. And you see it's really fuzzy. Um, okay, so we'll go back to, we'll just do 111, 111 for now. You don't have to use my values. This is something you can play around with. It'll affect like how aggressively um, your blurred image gets converted. But then actually the next thing that we do is invert the blurred image back. So we're changing it back to standard grayscale after it's been blurred. That's what gives it that like sketched effect. It's actually really cool how it works. And all we have to do to get it back is 255 minus blur inverted gray image. And we will call this one just inverted blur because we're getting real long on variable names now. So we'll go with inverted blur and we're going to display that in the transform blurred. And let's take a look at it. So there you go. We're back to standard grayscale. We're blurred and inverted. And now the last piece is we just actually turn it into a sketch by doing this divide the gray image by the blurred image and scale. Okay. And that'll make a little bit more sense once I type it in here. But you do, so this is actually going to be the sketch now, the sketch transform. And you do cv2.divide, okay, so, and then you give two values for division. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the original gray image, and we're going to divide it by the inverted blur. So basically we took the first grayscale, we flipped it and blurred it, and then flipped it back, and we're comparing the two. And that's what's actually creating the sketch. I'm not an artist. I'm not going to explain, like, uh, how that applies to how you would actually do a sketch in real life. Oops. Um, but you divide one by the other and then scale it to 256. That's saying like your scale is a full RGB range. And then we're going to go ahead and show you what's going on now. So instead of inverted blur, let's show sketch. Oops. All right. So there you go. I mean, that's pretty sweet. Uh, not a ton of lines of code. Uh, definitely a need to kind of know how OpenCV works and some of those specific tools. But look at that. You have like, it looks like a hand-drawn pencil sketch of a photo. And all we did is a few quick transforms. Now I'll show you what how this value we talked about earlier, how it affects your end result. And that may be what you want to play around with the most. You can see when I go with a, a thicker line, it kind of creates this like more stark contrast. You have thicker lines around the edges. You lose a little bit of definition, but you get some thicker, darker lines. Now, if I were to go the far opposite way, like let's go down to like 31. Okay, so now we're going to be pretty light. You can see you have really fine detail, or maybe you can't see. You have really fine detail, but you have nothing bold, like nothing popping out at you. So whatever image you're doing might affect this. If you're creating like a photo editing app, this might be something where you allow that variable to be on a slider. So while it's up, you can slide it around and you can actually see it shift. But for now, this is pretty sweet. We just converted any basic photo to a sketch. 
Now let's say that you want that photo to actually be saved somewhere and you don't want to have to like open your snip tool, take a screenshot, crop it down. Well, that's super easy. So if you want to save your sketch, save your sketch. Okay, not the best speller. All you have to do, you remember when we opened this image up top, we did uh, CV I'm read. Now it's CV I'm write. Okay. And just give it a name. So we'll call it my sketch dot PNG. And then tell it what image to save. So we're going to save the sketch. And this way, when we run this, it won't just show us it. It'll also save a copy and we'll see it over in our library here. Okay. So we've got this transformed image. It looks pretty cool. And then if I close these and I allow this guy to refresh, there we go, it pops in my sketch PNG. And now this is like an actual image. You can, oh, a little closer to my face than anyone should zoom. But you can zoom in. You can see this, like it's a really good tool. You got to get right down to the pixels before you start noticing any kind of issue. Um, and so hopefully you found that cool. It's 27 lines of code, and that's only because I added a lot of comments, which you should always do. But I hope you found this cool. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a ton. And let me know in the comments what you want to see next. If you want to see more of this kind of video, more games, a different software, just let me know what you think would be good for this channel because I am just getting started out, and I love suggestions. So I really appreciate you watching. I really appreciate your feedback. and. Uh, thanks for watching. Good luck with your code and uh, thanks. Bye.